For years, we've kind of been told that glucose is the enemy, right? The bad guy behind cravings, energy crashes, and all sorts of health problems. But what if I told you that's not the whole story? What if the most important fuel for your body isn't the villain at all? The real secret is just learning how to tame it. Take a look at this number. It looks like something straight out of a physics class, right? 8 times 10 to the 18th power. Well, that is the staggering number of glucose molecules your body burns every single second. That's the energy that's powering literally everything you do, from your heart beating to you even thinking about what I'm saying. To try and wrap your head around a number that big, think about it like this. It's the equivalent of burning every single grain of sand on the entire planet, every 10 minutes. That's the massive scale of the energy demand that's happening inside you right now. It just goes to show how absolutely vital this fuel is. So that leads to a huge question, doesn't it? If our bodies are literally designed to run on this stuff, why is glucose linked to so many health issues today? Well, that's the paradox we're gonna unpack right now. And here's the answer. It's actually pretty simple. The problem isn't the glucose itself. Nope, it's the speed, the sheer velocity at which it slams into our bloodstream. You see, our biology was built for a slow, steady delivery of fuel. But our modern food world, well, it's put that whole system on hyperspeed. The huge difference really comes down to one key ingredient, fiber. See, in nature, starches and sugars come packaged with fiber, and fiber acts like a metabolic break, slowing the whole process down. But modern food processing, it strips all that fiber away, leaving these refined carbs and sugars to just race into our system with absolutely no speed limit. And this uncontrolled speed is what creates a glucose spike. And trust me, these spikes come with a pretty big biological price tag. So what actually happens inside our bodies when this fuel delivery goes so wrong? We're going to walk through three main consequences. First, something called oxidative stress. Second, a process known as glycation, which is kind of like you're slowly toasting from the inside out. And third, the thing that leads to fat storage, which we're going to call the insulin tetris game. Okay, first up, oxidative stress. I want you to imagine your cell's powerhouses, the mitochondria, as these tiny little engines. When a massive rush of glucose arrives all at once, it's like flooding those engines with way too much gas. They get totally overwhelmed, and they start sputtering out these damaging molecules called free radicals. These little troublemakers then go around and attack our DMA and our cells, basically speeding up the aging process on a cellular level. Now, for the second consequence of a glucose spike. It's a process called glycation, and the best way to think about it is that you are literally browning or toasting your own body from the inside out. So, whenever a sugar molecule bumps into a protein or fat in your body, it damages it. It's a normal part of aging, but big glucose spikes just hit the fast forward button. And here's the real kicker. Fructose, that's the sugar you find in sweet foods and sodas, is 10 times more potent at causing this browning damage than glucose is. That's why a spike from a sugary drink is so much worse than one from, say, a potato. And finally, we have our body's emergency defense mechanism, which has its own side effects. Think of a glucose spike like a game of Tetris where the blocks are falling way, way too fast. Your pancreas releases the hormone insulin to try and clear those glucose blocks away. Insulin's first job is to fill up the storage slots in your liver and muscles. But what happens when those are full? Well, the overflow protocol kicks in, and any extra glucose gets converted and stored as fat. Game over. Okay, so that was the problem. But now for the really good news. We are not helpless victims in this process. Not at all. There are incredibly simple, science-backed hacks we can all use to flatten those glucose curves and take back control. So let's get into the solutions. All right, the single most powerful hack has less to do with what you're eating and everything to do with the order you eat it in. It's this simple. You always start with fiber-rich foods, like vegetables, first. Then you move on to your proteins and fats, and you save the starches and sugars for the very end of the meal. And you might be wondering, does that really make a difference? Oh yeah, a landmark study found that eating the exact same meal, just in this specific order, can reduce the glucose spike by a massive 73%. That is a game-changing result from just changing a simple habit. So hack number two just builds on that same idea. Before any meal that has carbs, just add a dedicated green starter. This could be a side salad or some cooked veggies. 
The whole point is to get that protective fiber mesh into your gut first so it can slow down the absorption of everything you eat after. You know, the first meal of the day really sets your metabolic tone for the next 24 hours. A typical breakfast of cereal, milk, and juice to your body, that's basically dessert. It's a huge dose of refined starch and sugar that causes a massive spike. But a savory breakfast, one that's rich in protein and fat, creates a nice, flat, stable curve that prevents that mid-morning crash and it keeps cravings in check for the rest of the day. And why are these fiber hacks so critical? Because a staggering 95% of us, 95%, don't get the recommended amount of fiber every day. So when you add a green starter or you choose a better breakfast, you're not just optimizing, you're literally fixing a huge deficiency in the modern diet. Now, what about those times when you want to enjoy dessert or a big starchy meal? Well, for that, here is the ultimate power combo. A tablespoon of vinegar in a glass of water before you eat can actually blunt the spike by up to 30%. Then, after the meal, just use your muscles for 10 minutes, like a quick walk. This helps them vacuum up all that excess glucose from your bloodstream. No extra insulin needed. So when you put this all together, we're not talking about a restrictive diet at all. We're talking about a new set of rules for how to eat, one that empowers you to manage your body's own fuel system effectively. So here's your new toolkit. To fix those rapid surges from stripped fiber, you eat your veggies first. To avoid that morning energy roller coaster, you choose a savory breakfast. And to prevent that dreaded post-meal slump, you've now got the vinegar and movement combo. Simple fixes for really common problems. And just remember the impact we're talking about here. This isn't small stuff. We're talking about a 73% spike reduction just from changing your food order and another 30% from a little bit of vinegar. These are profoundly effective strategies. The big takeaway here is really to shift your focus. For decades, we've all been told to count calories. But a calorie of fructose and a calorie of protein have vastly different effects on your body. Understanding how molecules like fiber, glucose, and fructose actually interact with your biology is so much more important. So as we wrap this up, I just want you to think about this one question. You don't have to do everything all at once. What is the one simple change from this toolkit that you can apply to your very next meal? Maybe it's just eating the salad first or taking a short walk after lunch. That's it. Because ultimately, this isn't a war on carbs or about feeling deprived. It's about being intelligent. It's about enjoying the foods you love by simply dressing them in fiber, eating them in the right order, and using your muscles, all to slow down their delivery. It's about putting you back in control of your body's ultimate fuel.